Well, welcome to the show, and thanks so much for joining us. Here on 700 Club Interactive, we want to be interactive, and we enjoy answering your questions and discussing the topics you want to learn more about. That's right. You, our viewers from all over the world, have commented with your questions on social media, and today we'd like to take some time to answer one of those questions that came in just a few days ago. So this is from Sensi from South Africa. She commented on Facebook. She's asking, I want to walk in the gifts of wisdom and words of knowledge. How much must I pray to be able to do that? Uh, so, okay. We're going we're gonna to go there. All right. How much <laughs> should she pray? Um, it's not about what you do. You could never pray enough. You could never do enough for the Lord in order to receive that. It's really simple. It's just believe. <laughs> believe that it's yours. All right. Let's talk about uh, you. Oh, okay. Okay. Turn there was in the a time where you were... Just starting out hosting this show, and mm -hmm. we were getting ready to say, okay, we're going to pray, yep. and we're going to get words of knowledge. Mm -hmm. And you were nervous about it, and I you was. came to me and yep. said... Uh, I've never done that before. <laughs> and, <laughs> and I responded... <laughs> um, you responded with scripture, and you said, rivers of liber living water will, f will pour out of you, will flow out, out of you. Out of your innermost being will pour rivers of living water. water. Mm -hmm. And what did you do with that word? Uh, I said, yes and amen. <laughs> I, <laughs> I think said, your initial okay. reaction was, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember I mean, of the course, look on your I, face. There was a little fear and doubt still there, but I just received it. And I was like, okay, Lord, well, we're stepping out. And that's what you have taught me over the years for sure, is that faith is spelled R-A-S-K, risk. You have to take a risk. And you, I mean, you're just, you have to let go. And I'm still learning this too, but you have to let go of, the fear of messing up or the fear of getting it wrong because... Oh, get rid of performance. Yeah. You know, cleanse your mind, uh, cleanse your soul, cleanse your thought process from dead works, cleanse your conscience mm -hmm. from dead works. Uh, we, we, we think, and we're very conscious of how we've fallen short of the mark, we've missed the mark, how many things we've done wrong, how many things we should have done, we didn't do, all of those things, and get rid of all of that and mm -hmm. serve the living God. Another way to spell faith is trust, mm. T-R-U-S-T. Yeah. yeah. Trust him. Trust the living God that what he has promised to do, he will do. When, when you get into the bargain or, or the penance-oriented or the works-oriented, or I haven't fasted enough or I haven't prayed enough or I haven't gone to Sunday school enough and I don't know the Hebrew and I don't know the Greek— and I haven't had angels come and visit me and give me golden scrolls to eat. All of those things are um, denying what God has promised. Mm. It's called the gift of the Holy Spirit because that's what it is. It's a gift. Mm -hmm. You don't earn it. <clears throat> yeah. It's given to you freely. How do you open the gift? You believe. And from your innermost being, will flow rivers of living water. Mm -hmm. And when you open that up, you can't stop it. Mm -hmm. And words of knowledge will just come. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you you'll have thoughts you never thought you had. Yeah. Ashley, just, what, two weeks ago, yeah. um, was, was having a word of knowledge about healing, and it was just so powerful, so strong. And people, you know, heard that, and they got healed. I mean, it, it's, it, you know, I, should, I shouldn't say it was just not just two weeks ago. It's every time. Well, it's every time he opens his mouth and prays for people as well because it's the same spirit. It's yeah. the Holy Spirit inside of each one of us, and we just have to believe and receive what the Holy Spirit, who the Holy Spirit is, what he does, all of that. Um, and I, I remember listening to Jen Johnson. Do you know who Jen Johnson is from mm. Bethel Music? She's one of the founders of Bethel Music, singer, songwriter, and she was speaking about the gifts of the Holy Spirit and just, you know, people were asking her, well, how do you operate in prophecy and words of knowledge and all this stuff? And, you know, she was just kind of talking about her own journey and how when she was first starting to really receive that and operate in it, she would say she would preface. Is this Bill's wife? No, this is, this is the daughter-in-law. Daughter-in-law, mm -hmm. okay. Um, she's married to Brian Johnson. So, you know, she would preface people and say, hey, I'm... I'm learning to practice the voice of God, and this is what I think and feel God is saying. Let me know if this is, if this, you know, resonates with you. 
Would you say that's a that's a good approach? Um, I, I think it, it it makes it easier for you to come out and say it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, sometimes that's that's and it. So, you, know? you know, if anything that makes it easier for you to yeah. say it, well, you know, by all means, make it easy on yourself. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I, I have on occasion, when I first started out with it, um, I'll, I'll tell one of my war stories, I would argue with God. I'm like, what are you talking about? Uh, I, I, I grew up, obviously, with the gifts of the Holy Spirit being manifested in our house and in uh, CBN. Mm -hmm. And so I was familiar with it. Uh, I rebelled against everything. And, but when I came back to the Lord, I was ministering in, in Manila, and we were going out door to door, and it was a poor area of Manila. And they didn't speak any English, and I only spoke Tagalog. And so we were going two by two. The man I was with was you know, born and raised in Manila, so he was fluent. And we come to this house. They don't speak any English. And so, okay, I'm now the prayer warrior. And so <laughs> I had prayed in the alleyway outside, Lord, give me a word of knowledge. And, you know, speak to me. And so we get into the house. We're talking to this teenage boy and trying to witness to him because he doesn't speak English, I go into intercession mode and I say, okay, Lord, do you have a word for him? And the, and the word came, education. It was a single word, education. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so I argue with God, God, don't you see where we are? Um, mm. Don't you see that we're really poor here and you want me to talk to him about education? What? Mm -hmm. and, and every time I argue with God, I lose the argument. So, you know, it was silence, and, and uh, so I finally said, okay, I'll say it. Uh, and I turned to my friend and said, ask him about education. And as soon as he did, the tears started coming down the boy's face. Mm -hmm. He had done very well in school. He was the first person in his family forever who had ever been accepted into college. Wow. But the family didn't have any money to send him to college because his mother had a mental illness. Mm -hmm. Well, now I knew what God was doing. And now I didn't have just trust. I didn't have just faith. I, I had boldness. I said, well, bring her down here because God wants to heal her. Mm -hmm. And she got healed. She got delivered from mental illness. Wow. Um, they ended up joining the church. And then he ended up, uh, God just did a, you wow. know, all from one word. Yeah, just one word. So, you know, use these gifts. God, want, it's amazing to me. If I were God, I'd want to use angels because they're a lot more cooperative. But use the gifts. Open yeah. the gift. Yeah. Open yourself to opportunities where gifts can come into play. Um, you know, just, Lord, who do you want me to talk to today? Mm -hmm. What do you want to heal today? Who do you want to heal today? Who do you want me to witness to? What is the word that you want me to give? Is there something, a key that will unlock his heart and show him you? All of these things are wonderful to do. And when you get into regular practice, the more you use it, the more you'll get. Yep. Uh, you look at Ashley today, she's gone from, I don't do that, <laughs> to uh, not just, I, I, I got this, uh, I flow in this, there's a whole river of this, and it just pours out of her. It, and that can happen to you. Yeah. All you have to do, is, open the gift. Yes, yes. Only I think by, I'm preaching. I gotta there stop. you are. Only by the grace of God. <laughs> yeah, Only you by are. the All grace right, of God. Guys. Well, if you guys want to learn more about topics like this, <laughs> check out CBN's podcast. It's it, the lesson. It's with me and Gordon. Every week we share scriptures, inspiring testimonies, and scriptural truths. We actually did an entire episode. Actually, we did uh, several different episodes on all of the spiritual gifts, including words of knowledge, wisdom, all of that. Um, so make sure you go to CBN's YouTube channel, or you can watch on the CBN Family app. New episodes are released every single Wednesday. Again, find it on uh, the CBN's YouTube channel or your favorite podcast provider. So if you listen on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, whatever, uh, you can also watch every episode at cbn.com slash the lesson. All right. Still ahead, we'll <laughs> introduce you to a pair of unlikely friends. I was shocked when find out how much she knew about the Bible. She knows more about it than I do. See how these next door neighbors have bonded over Bible stories right after this. Ten-year-old Laney knows a lot about the Bible, and yet until recently, 
She had never been to church. Well, as it turns out, she's been learning about God all by herself, thanks to CBN's Superbook. Meet Lainey. She's a 10-year-old aspiring artist. I love to draw horses, emojis, people. One of Lainey's favorite people is her 80-year-old neighbor, Skip, who's nearly blind. They have a very special friendship that began with their mutual love for animals. Nothing I wouldn't do for that kid, and I told her mother and dad, I said, you don't have to worry over here because anybody bother her, I'd die for her. Skip also wanted his young friend to know about Jesus, the man who did die for her. He knew Lainey's parents didn't go to church, so he invited her to go with him. In Sunday school class that day, Lainey and the other children watched an episode of Superbook. Pastor Kelly Westmark noticed that Lainey had a lot of answers for a girl who had rarely been to church. And I said, Lainey, how many times have you been to church? And she said, well, this is my second time. And I said, well, I, I don't understand. How do you know about this? And she said, well, I learned it all on the Superbook app. Yeah, I was shocked to find out how much she knew about the Bible. She knows more about it than I do. Lainey explained that a year before, a classmate showed her the free Superbook app. She downloaded it onto her own tablet and started learning Bible stories and playing Superbook games. Then she responded to an invitation she saw on the app. It says, are you ready to accept God? I said yes, and then told me a prayer to say, and I told that prayer, and ever since then, God's always been in my heart. Lainey looks forward to going to church with Skip every week and learning more from Superbook. Her favorite characters are Gizmo and Joy. You wouldn't expect a lady to be strong, but she would be really strong in it, mostly a lot of things. Kelly says the messages and strong role models found in Superbook will make a big difference in Lainey's life and in the lives of other children who need guidance and hope. We're trying to break through that and just asking God, God, please bring your love and your light and your hope, you know, to these little kids. And God did that for Lainey. Lainey was recently baptized. Now she tells everyone, including her parents, about Superbook and Jesus. I tell my mom and dad that it's really fun and it's really good for me to learn about God. And I'm so thankful for the Superbook app. She would not have known the Lord without Superbook. I think it's the best thing that could happen to her. What a wonderful story. When children hear the stories of the Bible, when they can see them, uh, when, can, when they experience them, it changes them. The Word of God never returns void. That's why we want to be teaching the children of the world and showing them the stories of the Bible. The Superbook, uh, is the, the whole series has just had such an impact worldwide, not just in English, not just here in the United States, but around the world. And if you're a member of the 700 Club, every place on that map, you're a part of it. Because you gave, we're able to do this. We're able to build the Superbook app. We're able to distribute it. We're able to translate it. We're able to do all these wonderful things to get the stories of the Bible to the children of the world. A whole generation is now rising up, knowing that God loves them, knowing that miracles can happen. You're a part of it when you join the 700 Club. If you're not a member, I encourage you to call us, 1-800-700-7000. Just say, I want to join the 700 Club. If you're already a member, consider increasing. Consider going to 700 Club Gold at $40 a month. 1,000 Club, $1,000 a year. That breaks out to $84 a month. And if you would like to directly support Superbook, uh, we've got something called the Superbook Club. And you can join that for a gift of $25 a month. This is a recurring gift. Every time we get a new episode of Superbook, you'll be first in line to receive it. Right now, we're offering the Widow's Might. You'll get not just one copy, you'll get three copies. Then you'll get access to all the episodes, season one through five, uh, on the Superbook app and on CBN Family, uh, that app. It's all yours as a Superbook Club member. So if that's you, call us and say, I want to be a Superbook Club member, 1-800-700-7000, or you can go to CBN.com. Ashley? Well, up next, a shattered girl finds a kindred spirit. It felt like chains coming off, and I was telling her what happened, and that really 
that really did something for me. See how they repaired their broken lives next. Cameron's perfect life was derailed at an early age. She tried anything and everything to numb the hurt. And when that didn't work, Cameron even considered suicide. To her, that was the only option. That was until she sat down with a friend who had the same pain. I remember being told things like, you're ugly, your hair is ugly, you're too fat. As a child, you take those hurtful things and you harbor them, and that's what I did. I just started developing this really bad self-image at a young age. I didn't really know who I was, and I didn't know how to communicate that, especially to the people around me, because I was like, I mean, you're, you're one of the people who hurt me. I became a really good liar. Around maybe five, six, I had been molested. When you're little, you don't, you don't understand what's going on, but it's having an effect on you. Everybody becomes an enemy. So I would put up walls and only let you see a side of me that I felt was acceptable, and you never got to really see the real me. I would try to fit in, and it didn't work. So I got on the internet. The internet was kind of like my safe place, because I could be who I wanted to be on the internet. And that kind of opened the door to pornography. Teenage years, I thought dating was one of the things that you did in order to be somebody. I started having sex, sneaking around. I would delve into different things and try to run with different circles to try to find me. That's actually when I started dealing with homosexuality. It's crazy because you, you try to do things to make yourself better, but you just end up making yourself worse. I couldn't sex it out, I couldn't drink it out. I couldn't hang out with enough people. I, I couldn't wear the right clothes. I was a wreck. Right before I was 16, I was raped by someone I knew. Not only am I depressed, am I suicidal, am I dealing with homosexuality? Now I'm dealing with this. What in the world? It made me even more isolated. It really made me hate myself. Why would you do this? Why would you make this kind of decision? How crazy can you be? I didn't feel like I could tell anybody, like, who, who's gonna listen to me? You just feel so dirty, but you become a master at hiding it. I was 17, and I was invited to church uh, with a friend of mine. There's just all this singing and dancing, and I was just like, ooh, I've never experienced this before. And I was like, Man, like, I, I want that kind of light. I want that kind of peace. I came in contact with a young lady who's still a friend of mine now. And I remember one time we hung out and we were sitting at the table and she said, Kim, what, what's really going on with you? I was like, you know, well, what, are you, what are you talking about? You know, putting up that wall. And she said, you know, I don't know why the Lord is telling me to say this, but I'm gonna say it. She said, Kimmy, I've been raped. And I was like, Okay. And she said, the Lord told me to tell you that. And she said, were you raped? And I was like, yes. It felt like chains coming off. And I was telling her what happened. I was explaining the story and she was like, you were raped and you're gonna be okay. And that really, that really did something for me. It took time. I started hanging around Christian friends and I started going to church and I started hearing the word. Second Corinthians 5 and 17, where it says that we're all new creatures in Christ. The old is gone and the new has come. When I read that verse, I was like, whoa. It was crazy to think that someone like me, who's made a lot of crazy, irresponsible decisions, could be transformed into something new, could be loved by the creator of the universe. And I was like, I can't keep living this kind of life. God, I want you to come into my life. I need you to be my savior. Like, I really need to do this for real. I began to pray for the people who hurt me, people who told me, you this, you that, you're not this, you're not that. 
and even for the, for the men who raped me, I began to pray, and like, God, bless him. That was a huge step. Right now, I oversee a campus ministry called Youth Taking Charge, it's YTC. It allows me to share my story with other people that are in my generation, to be able to look at them and say, hey, I, I see where you are, and I was there too, come on. I go from not wanting to tell you about the stuff I'm dealing with, and now I'm sharing it with everybody. It's straight discipleship. <laughs> And I love it. But when you become free in Christ, now the chains are broken and you have a choice. It's not easy, but at the same time, you have to take that risk because there's freedom when you start telling your story, when you start confessing. <laughs> I love me. I believe that Jesus loves me. I really do. And sometimes we don't, we don't think like that. Like, Jesus loves everybody. You know, he's just Jesus and he's supposed to. He does love you. He's very intentional about getting to know you. And that's where my confidence lies. Take a picture or? Are we recording? Wait, oh. <laughs> yeah, Jesus does love you. Hear those words from Cameron today. God loves you. And I don't know about you, but when I look at Cameron, wow, she's such a light. The light in her eyes is radiant. And that only comes from Jesus. The light that you see in her comes from her heavenly Father. It is only in a relationship with your Savior where the dark things, the broken things in our life can become into something beautiful, can be transformed into something beautiful. You just saw it in Cameron's story. God transformed her life. God turned her mourning into dancing, and he wants to do that for you. I'm also reminded of the scripture. It's in, it's in the beginning when Adam and Eve, they sinned, and God comes looking for them, and he asks, where are you? Where are you, my child? And I believe the Lord is asking you that question. Where are you? Friend, I wanna encourage you to stop running from the Lord. Stop hiding from Him. No matter what darkness that you have endured, He wants to carry you through. He is reaching down. I, I see Jesus just reaching down, giving you His hand. The pit that you're in, you're looking up, you see His hand, grab His hand. Grab His hand, friend, because He is gonna pull you out of that pit whether it is a circumstance that you put yourself in or something happened to you, just like it happened to Cameron, whatever situation you're in, Jesus is ready, willing, and able to pick you up, to carry you, to set your feet on the rock, the rock of Jesus Christ. If that is you today, if you just wanna say, Jesus, help me. If you need help in prayer, grabbing his hand, and accepting Him, and living a life full of hope and love and freedom and deliverance, pray with me right now, because you are going to accept Jesus into your heart and it's going to be an amazing thing. Just do it right now. Lord Jesus, I cry out to you. God, I see your hand and I am reaching up and I am grabbing it. I want you in my life like never before. Jesus, deliver me from myself, deliver me from my sin, deliver me from my past, deliver me from my emotional trauma. God, I believe that you walked on this earth, that you died on the cross for my sins and for the forgiveness of my sins, and three days later you resurrected, and that same resurrection power now lives in me. Thank you, Jesus, I pray and I ask that you continue to transform me from this moment forward, forward, you transform my life from the inside out. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.
and amen. If you just prayed that prayer with me, please give us a call. Give us a call at 1-800-700-7000. Let somebody know that you just prayed with some girl on TV and you gave your life to Jesus and they will be ready, willing, and able to continue to pray for you and send you material that's just going to help you along your faith journey. God bless you, friend. Gordon. We leave you these words from Psalm 136. Give thanks to the God of heaven. His love endures forever. Realize that. Let his love endure forever and for you today. God bless. We'll see you tomorrow. Hello, I'm Gordon Robertson. Thanks for watching the video. Be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for more encouraging videos like this one. Welcome to the 700 Club Interactive Family, and God bless you.